incredibly complex organ. It communicates within itself um, electrically and chemically. I would guess most people in this audience could come up with four or five neurotransmitters that we know about in the brain, you know, serotonin, endorphins, dopamine. Most people have sort of got some idea of those. But there's probably something like a hundred neurotransmitters that are used, a hundred different chemicals that are used by the brain to facilitate communication between one nerve cell and another. And even the ones we do know about turn out to have all kinds of subsets of different receptors so that serotonin has you know, loads of different types of receptors and subtle changes in molecular structure. Um, it can be very, very difficult, therefore, to work out exactly what's happening because um, everything is in dynamic balance with everything else. The communication is chemical and electrical and you don't necessarily know that something, say, say a little piece of brain is working less than it, you think it normally should, you don't know if that's because it's got a problem or there's a problem somewhere else that it isn't being stimulated enough, if you see my point. You can make inferences, but you can't prove where the actual problem is. So I'm kind of leaping around, but moving to a sort of widely held belief, which is that depression is caused by depletion in serotonin. I think, am I right in suggesting that most people have heard that suggestion that uh, depression is a disease where your serotonin levels drop? Is that something, yeah? Um, it may be true that lower serotonin levels in some parts of the brain are linked to depression, and that it is true, but not to all parts, uh, not, not to all types of depression, and um, also, does that make it the cause of the depression, or is it merely an incidental byproduct of the depression? Um, if I get malaria and I get a fever, the fever is not the cause of my problem. The cause of my problem is a malarial parasite knocking around and, um, and all the rest of it. So just making sort of links between particular chemicals in particular bits of the brain and cause and effect is probably taking too many steps. I like to sort of step back and see the whole thing as being about balance. There's a word for it, uh, homeostasis. Um, homeostasis is the ability of this organism miraculously, beautifully and brilliantly to maintain a state of balance under all kinds of circumstances. This is really what um, enables us to survive. And, you know, ultimately that's our job, to survive, send our DNA on down the line. Um, you can go to the North Pole, you can go to the equator, your body temperature is 37 degrees. You can uh, eat lunch, not eat lunch, your blood sugar is going to be roughly the same, you can drink water, not drink water, etc., etc. Everything's about balance. And the brain is a wonderfully, uh, brilliantly designed organ for self-balancing. In essence, if you do nothing to the brain, it'll balance itself. Indeed, um, the title of the book that I'm probably never going to write in my retirement, uh, I've only got as far as the title, is The Secret of Everything is Doing Nothing. Because if you leave it alone, on the whole, it balances itself out. Where things go wrong is when attempts are made to balance it yourself. So somebody, for example, doesn't like feeling anxious, and they drink, and they have addictive traits, and the drinking gets out of control, and they become an alcoholic simplistic example. They're trying to set a, a, a balance of their own into a system that if stepped back from would actually balance itself. 